Yo, what's good guys? Today in this video, we're gonna be talking about cheap filmmaking gear. This is such an expensive career to get into. So whenever you run into cheap filmmaking gear, that's actually good quality. We gotta highlight these things and get it to the masses. Before we get into this video, I wanna let you guys know that I'm gonna be giving away every single thing in this video that I'm talking about. So if you are a US resident and you are interested in winning any of these things that I'm talking about, all you have to do for an opportunity to win these things is to drop this video a like and also drop a comment down in the comment section with your Instagram or Twitter at so I can contact you if you win. In about a week, I'm just gonna go to one of these YouTube comment randomizers and choose five of you guys. So if you want, any of these things in these videos and you're a US resident, just drop a comment down in the comment section. All right, let's get into it. So the first thing that we're gonna be talking about in this video is the Terion M02 backpack. This backpack comes in at only $60. This is such an amazing price for this backpack. One thing that instantly caught my eye with this backpack is how stylish it looks. Like regardless of if it's camera gear in here or not, this just looks like a really cool backpack. This backpack comes in this olive green color that you guys see me sporting and also like a desert tan, uh, all tan color. I think the green's better, but that's just personally me. It has like a leather material up top to open up this drawstring little portion of the backpack. It just looks cool and honestly, it's just really comfortable for the price. I honestly can't believe that this costs 60 bucks. And at the bottom of the backpack, you guys will see this is the portion where you house your camera gear. And this is just your typical standard setup with like the different cube uh, layouts that you can do with uh, the different Velcro pieces that they give to you. Nothing different than pretty much any other camera bag that you guys have seen. But one thing that I really like about this backpack is like the top drawstring portion of it. One problem that I had with my last backpack was that it was just lacking a space for me to just randomly be able to toss stuff in. It was too organized. Like sometimes you just have things that you just wanna toss in the top of it. And this comes in handy for me. Now looking at this B-roll, you guys can see that I don't have anything in here. This is just like my super light YouTube carry where I just have like one lens and a camera body. And then at the top, you guys can see like my wires and uh, everything that I use to clean my lenses and my sensors and stuff like that. But I actually have carried this backpack to a music video set and it pretty much housed everything that I needed uh, for that particular the shoot. So this backpack is very functional. Uh, it's very affordable. It's very comfortable. And me actually using this backpack for the past two weeks to test it out to see if it was like a viable option. This backpack is really nice. And honestly, you can't beat it for the price point. The next thing that we're going to be talking about is the Star SGC598 microphone. This microphone comes in at only 30 bucks, 30 freaking dollars, which is crazy for what you get with this microphone and how good it sounds. So for starters, this microphone is powered by a single AA battery. It doesn't have an internal rechargeable one. One, but the sliding door for this is way better than like the old school uh, video mic pro from Rode. Like the access to it is way easier to get to. Now two really dope things about this microphone is the fact that you can increase the decibel input from the microphone. And also it has a low cut switch to get rid of a lot of those low frequency sounds that you guys might hear in your videos. Overall, this is a really amazing microphone and for $30, you can't beat it at all. So really quick, let's just hear how this microphone sounds. Okay, so now we are hearing audio straight out of the EOS R set to completely auto. This is how the microphone would sound straight out of the camera. Compare that to the audio coming from the Star microphone. All right, so here's an audio test of the Star microphone. I'm just out here in the open. It's a lot of ambience, it's birds chirping, it's wind. Uh, yeah, so just pay attention to this audio. Okay, so now we are hearing audio straight out of the EOS R. All right, so here's an audio test of the Tax Star microphone. This Tax Star microphone is literally amazing for the price point. All right, the next item that we're gonna get into is actually right here being used. Let me grab it real quick. Ah, here we go. So I saw a DSLR video shooter, my homie Caleb, uh, talking about one of these in a video a couple weeks ago, and I was like, yo, I gotta try this out. And when I got it, it literally amazed me. Hold on, how much does this thing even cost? This costs 22 bucks. It doesn't have a definitive name. Just know it's a light for like cabinets and closets, but the application with filmmaking that you can use this, endless, endless applications, I'm telling you. So for starters, this light is rechargeable. It has an internal battery that you just connect uh, a charger to, it recharges, and uh, it has four different light modes. I'm gonna show y'all really quick. So. If you tap this, it'll turn on. Uh, if you tap it again, it'll change to a different color. So daylight tone, a tungsten tone, and a mixed tone. And then it also has a flashing mode as well, which if you guys do music videos, you guys obviously see how this can be convenient. Uh, but if you tap it, it'll switch tones for you. So this is like the white tone right here, more of like a daylight tone. Uh, 
Here's the tungsten tone, which I had it on right there. Uh, it looks motivated because I have my beam back here. And you guys probably didn't even notice it was back there. It just adds that little separation. It looks like the light's coming from my beam, but it's actually coming from that, you see. <laughs> uh, but you press it again, and then it has like the blinking mode. It's really dope. And uh, you can also adjust the intensity of the light as well. So I'm gonna go back to my tungsten. And if you just hold down on it, you can see that the intensity will lower on it. And uh, it goes really dim too. It's like borderline like off, which is really tight. And then if you hold down on it again, it'll just go way up. This is awesome. So this comes with like uh, an adhesive mount, which is magnetic. So you can literally attach this to anything. I got mine's like janky, like rigged up with some gaffer's tape. For the sake of the person who wins this, I didn't want to like peel off the adhesive and stick it to my light, uh, knowing that you guys would probably need it. So I got mine's like janky rigged up on this light stand right here but uh, it comes with an adhesive mount that you guys can use to mount this pretty much anywhere. So yeah, this is awesome. Honestly, after I give this away, I can see myself purchasing another one of these. You really can't beat it. Put this back into the scene. I love the separation that it's creating for this video. Oh, I'm blind, I'm low key blind right now. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna be talking about in this video is the Secti 15.7 inch slider that comes in at a whopping $40.99. That's right, $41 for the slider. Insane, it's $40 for a freaking slider. So for starters, one really good thing about this slider is it comes with a really cool carrying case. The form factor and how lightweight this is is one legitimate reason why I could see me actually using this slider for some projects. So let's get into the slider. On the side of the actual base that slides the camera, it has like a knob which holds the base down so it's not constantly sliding while you're carrying it. The movement system of the slider features four bearings, so it's not like your typical uh, wide type of slider it has four bearings which is really good but it does not have like a flywheel system which can kind of control that inertia and that movement from the camera going back and forth so in order for you to use this you got to have a steady hand because it's nothing there to kind of counteract your movement of the camera and for $40 that's to be expected you're not gonna get like a sir quality slider for $40.99 but honestly, if you're looking for something that's portable for you to be able to take with you on a day to day basis to get some simple movements within shots, some push ins, uh, some slide left and right shots, I can definitely see this as a viable option for the price point. You honestly can't beat it. Now, before we get into the last thing in this video, which is such an amazing item, I got to give a shout out to the sponsors of this video, the people over at Squarespace. Now, you guys know what Squarespace is. You hear me talk about it all the time. If you are creative right now and you don't have a website, you don't have a storefront, you don't have a place for you to be able to display your work in a portfolio style, you are losing out right now. If you're looking to get consistent clientele, you're looking to get consistent sales on products, you definitely need a website. And Squarespace is a good place to do this at. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform that features really dope all-in-one designer templates. And they also have 24-7 customer support. So if you ever find yourself in a jam while you're making your website, you can just hit them up in the chat and they'll hit you right back. So for the people out there who are interested in taking their online presence to the next level with a website, Make sure you guys check out Squarespace. You can also head over to squarespace.com forward slash YCMHM for 10% off your first purchase. Link will be down in the description. Let's get into this last item. I'm really excited for this. I really love this item. So about two years ago now, which is crazy to think about, I went out to NAB and I linked up with my homie Armando, uh, Mondo Bites. Make sure you guys check him out on YouTube. He's one of my favorite YouTubers. We went out and we linked up on a strip and he was like testing out this lens. It was like this vintage lens. And the footage when I saw it was just freaking amazing. And I knew for a fact that I eventually wanted to get one. And this is like a perfect time for me to showcase this vintage lens with you guys because the price point of it just kind of meshes well with what we're displaying today. So the lens that we're going to be talking about today is the Helios 44 M4 58 millimeter F2 vintage lens. This is a vintage lens, but the one that I got is an amazing quality and the image, the flaring, the character, everything that you see from the footage using this lens is so unique and honestly for the price point you cannot beat it. This is such an amazing stylistic lens. So this lens right here comes in at 60 bucks, but keep in mind you're gonna have to buy an adapter, which is basically screw on. Let me show you guys really quick. Let me go find a lens. All right, so you can see the lens right here, which uh, my adapter right here is for EF because I use Canon. I'm sure they have a Sony uh, E-mount as well, but it's basically just screw on. So if you just kind of screw that off, you'll see the original mount size for this lens. This right here costs 10 bucks. So in total, I would say that you will be spending around 70 bucks if you're looking to pick up this lens, which is not bad at all for what it does. So this lens is all manual. It has clicked aperture ring right here that you guys can see. And man, the footage that you get from this, the way that it flares when light comes into the actual glass, 
uh, the softness, everything about this lens just has so much character. Pretty much all of the B-roll that you guys are seeing in this video of me out with the camera backpack, uh, showing you guys the slider, all of this stuff was shot on this lens using the Canon EOS R, and I could not be happier with this lens right here. For the price point, uh, what it does, if you're not too set on having autofocus all the time, if you're down to manual focus, this lens is definitely something that I would recommend you guys check out. Yeah, so those are five filmmaking items that you guys can pick up right now for under 60 bucks, 50, 70. I don't even know what the price I'm gonna put on here. If I put 60, don't get mad at me because you gotta put that extra 10 towards that lens. Just get an extra 10 bucks. Before we get up out of here though, I gotta read some comments from my last video. Also, make sure you guys drop a comment down in the comment section uh, for an opportunity to win some of these things if you're a US resident. If you're not a US resident, just drop a random comment because you have an opportunity to be featured at the end of my next video. Let me grab my phone real quick. All right, so the first comment comes from Javier Mendez Photography. And they say, the only reason I'm half decent in my video skills is because of your videos. So thank you. Yo, I really appreciate that, man. I'm really glad that my videos are helping you. Let's just leave like a couple seconds to kind of highlight everybody who had comments relative to the appreciation of the video and just the overall content. Really appreciate you guys, man. Really appreciate you guys interacting, dropping comments and all that stuff like that. So a couple seconds to highlight a couple of the people from the comment section. The next comment comes from Kishan Kanojia. They say, do you pay for Adobe software or just use crack versions? I absolutely 100% pay for Adobe softwares. At this point in time in my life, yes, I pay for softwares. I feel like this is the best way to go because you have less malfunctions. You can actually utilize some of like the latest features and things that are being added to the programs. You can also update. So I don't know, like you got, I feel like you should be paying for Adobe, even though like they're charging an arm and a leg right now for their software. If you utilize the majority of the applications, I feel like it's worth it. The next comment comes from Justin Kelsey. They say, do you also work for Amazon? Intern with them in college and definitely recognize that sticker on your phone. It's talking about this sticker right here. <laughs> nah, I don't work for Amazon, man. So the whole story behind this phone and this sticker, a lot of other people were asking as well. My phone had a cracked screen, so I had to send my phone back to Sprint. And this is the phone that they sent back to me as a loaner phone. So this is why I have a barcode on the back of my phone. I hate this phone. It's an iPhone 6, it's so slow. And honestly, like as an Apple iPhone user, you feel like the iPhone never changes. You never really notice it until you go backwards. Coming from an iPhone 8 to an iPhone 6, you notice how slow everything is. I cannot wait to get my phone back. The next comment comes from Edwin Lapitan. I'm just gonna go with that. I don't know, it's my bad, bro. I'm sure I'm butchering your name. But they say, yo, I see the thumbnail for this video is heat. Gotta love the details. He's talking about this thumbnail for the last video. You would not believe how long it took us to get this picture. We had to go to the bank and then withdraw a bunch of ones. And then we were in the middle of my street throwing up ones in the air and the wind was crazy. Cars were going by, we had to pick up all the money. This thumbnail took so much time, so I'm glad that somebody noticed it. I'm glad that somebody actually saw the details in this thumbnail. It took a long time for us to get it. So shout out to my uh, fiance for actually taking this picture. The next comment comes from Jeremy Jones, and they say, what camera monitor do you use? My primary camera monitor right now is the small HD Focus, but I think I'm gonna be picking up a Ninja 5 here really soon to use with my EOS R. The next comment comes from Deeds Productions, and they say, awesome video, homie. Have you ever considered doing real estate videos? I've met some people in the full-time filmmakers group and they make like a hundred thousand a year from just that alone that's dope i always kind of like recommend real estate like videography and photography to people who actually want to make money but for me i'm not really in it for the money i just like to do certain stuff i feel like real estate video would just bore me like you know but if you're trying to get some money real estate video i feel like would be a super easy way to actually get some money doing video and photography and a lot of the people who do it honestly i don't feel that good like i just recently went to go look at a place because i'm about to move and the place was amazing but the photography that they're posting online about the space just didn't tell the whole story so I don't know, man. I feel like it could be an easy thing that you guys can do to definitely get some money. So if you trying to get money in video, check out real estate. The next comment comes from NTL Mellow TV and they say, when was that moment you decided that you was going to make film as a full-time gig? So for me, I'm kind of like different from everybody else. Like a lot of people had to like work a job and then they had to figure out when they wanted to leave that job to get into film. I never really had a job. I've only really had like three jobs in my life. I worked at Old Navy when I was 16. I worked for the census when I was like 17. No, I actually worked for a grocery store before that, probably when I was like 15 um, to 16. But I had like three jobs. But by the time I actually started doing film and like music video stuff, 
I never really had a job. I was like a full-time student for a while, so I kind of just had to transition from school to filmmaking, if that makes sense. And I was also doing graphic design for a while too, so I was actually getting paid off of that. So I never really had to make that transition financially to figure out if I wanted to go into film or not. I was kind of always broke, and for me it was just like, yo, it can't get any worse from here. I might as well just full-time this and see where it takes me. So uh, yeah, I had that benefit going for me that I was already broke, pretty much. The next comment comes from Handi Zula TV. They say, I challenge you to film a music video only on the Canon EOS R. Coming soon, man, coming soon, I promise you. And that's gonna conclude this video. Links to every single thing that I was talking about are down in the description. Make sure you guys drop a comment for an opportunity to win this stuff if you are a US resident. I'm out of here, guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop it a like, comment, also subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I'm out, guys, peace.